Hey guys, today I'll be doing problem 146, which is called LAU Cash. And this problem states that um, we want to design an event data structure for least recently used cash. It should support the following operations get input, get will get a value, and it will always be positive of the key if it exists in the cache. Otherwise, it will return negative one. Put uh, will set or insert the value if the key is not already present. When the cache is reaches its capacity, it should invalidate the least recently used item before inserting the new item. So the cache is initialized with a positive capacity. And one thing that we should consider is that we want to make sure that the get and put op operations are all of one operation, or I guess like uh, complexity. And um, here's an example that they go through. They're creating cache with capacity size two. When we put one and two, the cache would have those two va uh, keys and they'll map to the same number but two will be recently used and one will be um, least recently used. But once we get one, uh, one becomes most recently used and two becomes least recently used. When we add three, we would evict the least recently used item, which would be two. Therefore, the cache would only contain three and one. And because it only contains three and one, when we try to get two, we get negative one. Uh, so again, when we put four in, um, what happens is since there's only three and one in the cache, three is just been used right here. One's been used up there. Therefore, one is at least recently used. So when we put four in, uh, one becomes evicted. So now in the cache, there's just four and three. Therefore, when we try to get one, we get negative one because it's not found. When we get three and four, they do return the correct values. Okay, so if you haven't tried this problem, um, I recommend pausing the video to give it a shot. But otherwise, I will get started with it. Um, I will copy this code into CoderPad so that I can uh, debug it as I go. So I think um, I'm going to I'm going to take it slowly, um, I guess. So let me think about what kind of data structures I want to use. So if we want to do a least recently used, we need some sort of collection to store our items. And we need to be able to rearrange those uh, items as they are used in some sort of uh, list. So if we just use a regular Python list, um, this would work. but Imagine if we had a list and an item in the middle just got recently used. I have to put it in the front of the list to indicate that there's a certain ordering on um, how these items are recently used. So if I put the item in the front, I'll have to shift all the items that, are, that were on the left of it right one. And that would actually be O of n time. But if I, rather than using like a regular Python list, I can use a linked list, then to move an item, to move a node out of its position would be constant time. And to move it to the front would also be constant time. So because of that, I want to use a linked list to store that information, um, to store the information about, about uh, recently used so another thing that we would also need to consider is that when we try to get a key, we need to be able to get the key in O one time. So in order to do that, we should use, we can't just use a linked list by itself because we would have to loop over each of the uh, linked list to find the matching uh, key. And uh, because of that, we should actually use a map that would map a key 
to a node in the linked list. And then once we have the node in the linked list, we could prioritize it to the front to indicate that it's been recently used. And also that node would also contain the value um, of the uh, cache key. All right, all right, great. Let's get started. So um, initially in the constructor function, there's a capacity. So since we're getting a bad capacity, we should might as well save it onto the objects. And as I mentioned before, we want to use a linked list, in which case we have to create a node class that will be a, uh, I guess, the nodes of the linked list. So in this, node class, I'll have a value, and this will also have a pointers to the next node. And since we want to um, stitch, or I guess since we want to move items to the front and the back of the linked list, we would need a doubly linked list, um, and in which case we need a previous and next pointer. So I'll have a next set to none first and previous set to none. And the user of this object could set those values after, but then uh, the values should be initialized. So um, to encode a linked list, all we really need is pointers to the head and tail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, dummy nodes for the head and tail. And that way, we can always access um, elements near the head and tail without, I guess, looping through the entire uh, objects. So let's see, I'll create my head here, and this will be a node. And I will make it have value h. Uh, so that I will be able to know that that's the head. And I'll create another a node with the value t for tail. And now, initially, um, our linked list will be empty, but it will have the head and tail that will point to each other, in which is I have to say that the head that next is to set the tail, and the tail that previous is equal to the head. Great. So this constructor looks good so far. Um, let me write one function that would test this, con this the, I guess we'll print out the data of this object. So what I'll do is I'll have a function called um, uh, stir and it'll just create a string representation of this object. And what I'll print out is uh, a results and then I'll say that uh, I'll start with the head and I'll say that this is the current node. I'll say while the node is not none, then I want to add the node value. To add no value um, to the results, and I also want to add a, uh, I guess, a dash to separate the values. So I'll add a dash here, like this. But I really don't want to add the dash at the for the tail pointer. So. Um, if node is equal to self.tail, then I will uh, not have this dash here. Otherwise, I will have the dash. Great. So let me return this results and let me create a cache objects. So cache looks like this. I'll create it with size capacity 2. And then I'll print out the cache. And let me see if there's anything obviously wrong. Um, okay. So when I print out the cache, uh, this code runs forever because it's an infinite loop. 
since I never modified the node. So I say node.next is, or node equals node.next. So I'm actually looping over the link list. So uh, I save it again. Oops, let me save this. And now we see that this it goes from H to T, which is exactly what we expect, which is good. So um, we can get started with maybe using a function that puts an item. So let's say if I want to put one one, then I would need to add this node to the link list. And yeah, I'll probably just start with that. I'll, I'll add the node to the link list. And, but we need to somehow know if the node exists or not in the link list because we don't want to be adding duplicate nodes because if we, uh, the put function is supposed to either insert or update a node depending on if it exists or not. So I would need an object to map key values to the node. So I'll call this map for simplicity. And in the put function, there's two, there's two cases. Uh, if the node exists or a node does not exist. So I handle a case that the node does not exist in the, in the map, in the uh, data structure yet. So if key is not in the map, then we want to insert. Otherwise, we want to set. So um, if we want to insert, then we would create a node with the value. And we'll call this node. And then we want to add this node to the front. And since I feel like we're going to use a function that adds that moves nodes to the front a lot, I will just have a helper function called uh, move to front. And it just takes in a node. And then that should basically it. I need to do other things. For example, I need to add this node to the map. So self.map of p is equal to node. And then um, since we will be doing some evictions depending on the size, I will need to increase a size variable. And because I am increasing the size of the variable, I need to initialize it to zero. So this looks so good so far. Let's write a function called um, move to front. So this would take in a node. And um, imagine if we had uh, a link list that looks like this. And we wanted to add the node n. Um, then we would then we would need to move we'll have to add a node here so this is the before this is what we want to add and this is the after result um, so a couple things we have to update is what the head is pointing to and what the node one is pointing to and we also have to update node the node that's being passed in to point to the head and node one so let's first um, create this connection. So self.head that next is equal to node, and then node that previous is equal to self.head. And now we can create the next connection, which is right here. So node that next is equal to node one. But what is node one? Node one was uh, it was originally head that next. So we have to store that value first. So node one is equal to head dot next. Uh, so, and now node one that previous is equal to the node that's being passed in. And that should be it. Uh, I think that's it. So um, I'm putting this on one here and I'm also putting the cache afterwards. So now I should expect H1T. Uh, let's see if that is true. That's not quite true because I have not to use self head here. All right. Great. H1C. Okay. Now we need to uh, probably handle 
some other cases. For example, if we insert, um, if we, let's say, let's handle the case where uh, we add another item. Uh, this should automatically work. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it should automatically work. And let's now handle a case that we want to update a value. So if we want to put one and set that to be something like uh, new, like 100, then uh, we should expect one to still exist. But now one should be moved to the front. The reason why it isn't moved to the front is that this condition is false. Um, therefore, we need to. Therefore, we need to handle this case. So uh, we need to set the node. So to set the node, we would first get the node from the map. So stop that map of key. And now we would just set the node by using uh, the setter. And since we just used it, we need to then also move that node to the front. Great. Um, and let me think. Um, so this one's a bit tricky because not only we have to move this node to the front, we also have to remove the node from the linked list. So for example, if we had a node that looks like, if we had a linked list that looks like this, where the node that, the node in question is, uh, let's say it's right here, then if we just called our move to front function, then the new linked list would look like this. The node will be in front, but um, n n one will still have a note next pointer that points to n, and n two will still have a previous pointer that next that points to um, n as well, because this function never modifies what is this this function never modifies the. Um, N1 and N2, like where the node used to be. It just moves it uh, to the front, assuming that the node doesn't exist in the linked list yet. So let's write a function to remove that node from the linked list. Then we can move it to the front. So remove node. All right, great. So uh, remove self node. Uh, so if we had something that looks like this, then we want the final results to just be without that node. In which case, we need to uh, get the previous n1 and n2, and we just have to point them to each other. So node 1 will be the node that previous, and node 2 will be node that next. And it's convenient, that it's convenient that we have a uh, dummy head and tail variable uh, nodes because even if the node was the last node, the node that next will still exist because uh, it will just point to the dummy um, node. Okay, so we have node 1 and node 2 and we just want to point them to each other. So node 1 dot next is equal to node 2 and node 2 dot previous is equal to node 1. And just for sake of cleanup, we can just remove um, the node that next and node that previous, so that it's truly removed from its isolated from the link list. All right. So since we remove it, we add it. We don't have to change the size because we're just setting the value. Um, so let me try running this, and we should expect h one two t. Alright, uh, we don't get that because um, 
the, we're printing out the values, not the keys. So this is actually correct. All right, um, cool. Uh, let me then uh, think of what else we need to do. We need to also evict items. So for example, if we put uh, 3, 3 here, then we need to evict the last, the least recently used item, which will be 2. But I think what's going to happen now is we're going to add the 2 anyways, or the, the new value anyways. So yeah, 3 is here. But what we really need to do is we need to evict this 2. So after we increase the size, uh, we can check if the size is above the capacity. And if that's the case, we'll remove the node and then we can decrease the size to the capacity. So if self.size is greater than the capacity, capacity, then we should remove the last node, which is self.tail.previous. And good thing we have a remove function. Uh, and since we removed it, we can then decrease the size. All right, uh, let's see how it goes. Great, this looks good. So now, um, let's see what else we have to do. I guess we then have to write the get function, but this is all for the put function. I think this might be it for the put function. All right, so the get function, um, I think again there will be two cases if it's not in the map and we want to return negative one So key doesn't exist in the map then we want to return negative one And I just realized something once we remove this node we have to remove it from the we have to remove it from the dictionary and Let me update the stir function so that we are also uh, printing out the dictionary so that we could deep make sure that we don't uh, miss any bugs. So let's see. Um, unfortunately, the stir of a dictionary doesn't look nice. Oh, it actually does look nice. So this is the node, but the node doesn't have a stir function. So let me just create a stir function on the node class. So. And then I'll just say something like return value goes to self that value start this. Great. So, whoa. Um, hmm. I think I have to do wrapper. All right, great. So one maps to uh, the node with value 100, two maps to the node with value 2, and three maps to the node with value 3. Um, but the linked list only has 3 and 100. So when we added this, when we remove this node, we also have to remove from the map. So self.map of the key needs to be deleted but which key needs to be deleted? It would be the... Huh. This would have to be the key of... This would have to be the key of the last element. And unfortunately, we only have the values of the last element. And in order to get the key of the last element, we really have to store it in the node. Hmm. So the node should really be uh, a pair of key and value. So um, when I put an item in, rather than putting just the value, I just have to put the key and the value. And then So actually, hmm. all right. So what I can do is I can have a T 
two parameters for the node. It will take in a value and also a key. Um, in which case, I will have to update this. I'll set this to none initially, or default it to none, so it doesn't break our test cases. So when I add this key here, um, I then have the access to the key on this tail that I'm removing. So I can do self.tail.key and delete that from the map. Self.map. Alright, see if this works. Ooh. Self that tail that oh whoops, it should be the self that tail that previous. So this is the node that I want to remove. Although since I'm calling the remove function, I really need to remove from the map first so that uh, self that tail that pre maps to the same thing that I want to remove. But let me just move that to a variable node to remove is equal to this. And then I want to delete node that to remove that key, and I want to remove node to remove. All right, great. So now our um, our linked list matches our map. Great. Um, since we have a key as well, we probably don't need it. All right, so. Let me do one more thing in this third function. Let me add a new line here so that the uh, printout looks better. All right, great. Okay, so we successfully evicted something, and I think the last thing we need to do is uh, finish the get function. So the get function will return negative one when a value doesn't exist. So if I call get of, let's say, five, it should be negative one. Yep, I see negative one here. And um, then if I get a value that does exist, I have to return the node, but I should also uh, prioritize that uh, node. So if I try to get the key one, then the uh, I should get the value of 100, and also the link list should be updated. So let me print what happens when I call get of one, and I want to cache. Currently, um, this is not implemented. This will return none because uh, um, this is not the code is not there. Uh, yeah, it's turned done. So I have to handle that now. So otherwise, I have the node is equal to that map that key, and I want to return the node that value. But before I do that, I want to move that node to the front. Move to front node, and we get one hundred, which is good. But there's a problem. The problem is that the move to function, move to front function. Uh, let's see. The problem is that when I print out the cache, there's an error. Uh, it probably is doing an infinite loop, which is not good. Um, so move to front node. So the reason it's doing that is because I have to when I move. A note to the front. I have to remember to remove it from the. Um, I have to remember to remove it from the link list first. Because uh, move to front assumes that it's not in the link list. All right, great. Cool. So it looks like everything checks out. Um, let me put this code in uh, here. See if. It's working. So I'm going to run this code. Great. This looks like it matches. Let me submit this. Cool. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, please click on the like button. Uh, but have a good day.